All right, so welcome everyone to beginning a new school year with Bookshare. Okay, I'm Christine Jones. I'm a senior education program manager here at, at Benetech, which is the parent company of Bookshare. And joining us today is Chesney Ballantyne from the San Diego Unified School District. I'm going to just unmute uh, Chesney for a second so that she can say hello to everyone. Hello, how's everybody doing? <laughs> doing great. All right, good to have you with us, Chesney, and I'm excited. I know um, you're sharing some really uh, terrific tips today, and I know everyone will benefit from those. Um, let me go ahead and, okay, okay. Chesney, I just muted you again just um, until we get through the, the beginning part here. So, so I've got my contact information up on the screen and I'm happy to uh, field questions after this webinar as well. And I'll put up my information at the very end again as well. So thanks again for joining. Uh, we're going to jump right into the problem that we're addressing uh, with Bookshare today, which is that there's a portion of your district students who experience a barrier to reading printed books. And we'll talk more specifically about what some of those barriers might be, but <clears throat> these are students who basically need content in a different format because print uh, presents a problem for them. And in fact, <clears throat> ebooks are just as problematic for these students as printed books. So just because the print is on a screen doesn't make it any easier for them to read or process um, than, than it is if it's on a page. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they need it in a different format, but they do need their content at the same time as their peers and need access to the same materials at the same time. So that presents a dilemma for many of you, we understand. So we are here to present a great solution, which is Bookshare, which is an ebook library that makes reading easier. People with reading barriers such as dyslexia, blindness, physical disabilities can read in ways that work for them. So they can really customize their reading experience, uh, find uh, the font that they like, the voice that they like. They can listen to the books read aloud. They can also follow along with the highlighted text. <clears throat> they can make the, the type very large and they can read on a Braille device or in a hard copy Braille as well um, using Bookshare books. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we built in a lot of flexibility and a lot of options for reading books. <clears throat> Currently the collection has more than 650,000 titles and those are, <clears throat> that increases by about 5,000, <clears throat> excuse me, titles a month. It does include textbooks, books for assigned and leisure reading, books for upskilling, uh, which is just adding new skills. So maybe you have some students who are interested in learning computer languages. We have a great collection in Bookshare of books to learn new computer languages like Java or C++. Um, or maybe they want to learn to cook or they want to learn about how to live in an environmentally sustainable way. <clears throat> There's a wide range of how-to and, and great nonfiction books in Bookshare. <clears throat> Bookshare also contains many periodicals, hundreds actually of periodicals like newspapers and magazines that they can, um, students can read on a regular basis. Um, what's most exciting though is Bookshare is free for all qualified United States students of any age, uh, thanks to funding from the U.S. Department of Education, Office of Special Education Programs. And in addition, there are a lot of free options for reading Bookshare books. There are others that uh, have a low cost associated with them, and many tools that are commonly available in schools uh, read Bookshare books as well, and we'll talk about some of those today. To qualify to use Bookshare, a student has to be certified with by what the law calls a competent authority as having a condition that hinders or hinders them from reading or processing printed text. So some examples include a learning disability that affects reading such as dyslexia and a need for reading accommodations is a good leading indicator here that the student has an issue that uh, might qualify them for Bookshare. 
Uh, another condition is low vision or blindness, and then a physical disability that affects reading. These are all uh, characteristics or conditions that students might have that, um, that might qualify them for Bookshare. But we leave the decision about qualification up to the participants working, uh, the professionals working most closely with the students. So we don't actually make those determinations about qualification. We just ask that, uh, that you know, you make your best determination. Uh, and, you know, we're eager to serve as many students as possible, but uh, also we want to respect uh, the copyright law that, um, that is what gives us the ability to operate as Bookshare. And I wanted to mention, because many of you might be in states or districts that use Learning Ally, and we have a cross-qualification agreement with Learning Ally so that uh, anyone who signs up and as a member of Learning Ally, can use that as a basis for signing up for Bookshare. So we do um, cr uh, cross-qualify each other's members. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I'm trying to get my slides to advance. Okay, there we go. Uh, so to get started, it's pretty easy for educators. They just uh, create the account if you, they don't already have one, then log in, add qualified students, and sign books. And uh, Bookshare offers a number of ready-made reading lists that we'll show you today to which you can subscribe and then share those with students. You can also create custom reading lists and I, I just will make the point that reading lists are the way that uh, we connect the students with this vast collection that we have. So um, students on a school account access books through reading lists. And uh, Chesney's gonna show us a little bit more how they uh, use those at San Diego Unified. And then if there are ever are books that you need that are not in the Bookshare collection, you can request them and we will add them uh, at our expense. Uh, so we feel like we want to make sure and provide every book you know that a student needs for school and then students log in they look at their lists that have been set up for them by their teachers they find a book and they they read and they can read in a variety of ways you'll see here uh, just a list of different tools that read bookshare books so on devices like chromebooks we offer a free reader called bookshare web reader uh, this can, uh, using that tool can be enhanced with other Chrome extensions uh, like Read and Write for Google Chrome and also uh, Snap and Read. Uh, another tool that can be used on Chromebooks or computers is Capti Voice, and that's also free. They have a paid version as well. They have a free basic version. Uh, it's also possible to read Bookshare books in Microsoft Edge. And then on the iPad and iPhone, there are a lot of options there, several different apps, including the iBooks app, which is on every, every iPad and iPhone uh, automatically. And then uh, on the Android uh, platform, there are some great options as well. So many, many great ways for reading Bookshare books. So what I'm gonna do quickly is show you all a few new things, a new Bookshare um, offerings. And then uh, Chesney's gonna jump in and get into more of the nuts and bolts uh, as far as how she sets her uh, account up uh, for the new school year. So jumping in here to show you uh, the Bookshare website. Let's um, see, let me get to see here. Okay, let me just go here. Okay. <clears throat> so when you're on the Bookshare website, which is bookshare.org, if you scroll down, first of all, you'll always see the counter, the number of books in the collection here on the page. So you can see that as of right now, 652,979 titles in the collection. And that, that probably will go up by a book or two, even while we're in this webinar, because they are coming in uh, on a digital feed in many cases, uh, 24 hours a day. But um, what I wanna show you first is this Educators Get Started Guide, which is um, new and it's here on the homepage. So I'm gonna select that uh, box there. And then what this is, is basically a, a really easy way to walk through the sign up process. It walks through the steps 
for you here. It tells you what, you know, what URL to use to start the whole process of creating an account. It walks you through all the steps. This is for uh, signing up your school. And then uh, when you select next page at the bottom, uh, you get to the page about adding students. And uh, then we're going to go to the, oh, this is where you can add other teachers to your account. And then this is how you get books to students. This is about creating reading lists and using the reading lists and assigning them to students. And then uh, the next page here is going to cover how students log in and read. So I encourage you, if you haven't already signed up for Bookshare or maybe you've started the sign up process, you know, find the page of this guide that's relevant to you and jump in and, uh, and hopefully you can finish the process and get your students reading quickly and easily. So that is uh, brand new. And another new feature that we've added that I wanted to show you on the home page down here next to the Educators Get Started Guide is another uh, block called Find a Reading Tool. So I want to show you really quickly for students uh, and teachers to figure out the best tool to use. First, we want to know what device are you reading on? So are you reading on a computer or a laptop? Are you reading on a tablet or a smartphone or an assistive technology device? And then when you select that, then it asks you, you know, one more question, what type of, uh, what kind of device do you have? So it, I'm going to say uh, that I'm, you know, reading on a Chromebook. And then it comes up with a couple of options here. These are what we would consider to be the best options available. There are other tools that read on Chromebooks, for example, but we're limiting this tool initially to the ones that we think are gonna offer the very best experience. And so when I select, when I go to the Bookshare web reader page, for example, I get to a page with a lot of great instructions for how to use the web reader, you know, what browsers are compatible and, you know, different step-by-step uh, -step instructions for using the web reader. And there's also a handy uh, video here. This is about uh, maybe a little bit under two minutes in length, very short video that walks you through how to use Bookshare web reader. And every one of these tools in the reading tool wizard will eventually have a video. We're, we're uploading them all uh, as we speak. So uh, each page will have uh, a video, a short video describing how to use that particular tool. So we have instructions and, and the video for each tool that's in the reading tool wizard. So I encourage you to check that out as well so that you can uh, help your students decide on the very best tool. And in many cases, they might want to use more than one tool and, that, and that's great too. There are, again, we really um, designed this so that it's very flexible and accommodate, can accommodate however students want to read. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show is uh, a new selection of uh, resources for you. So if, you, if you're on the Bookshare webpage and you click on the little arrow next to Help Center and go to Training and Resources, and then here this orange block that says Training Resources, what we've done is we've taken all of our videos and how-to guides and put them on one page and organized them by topic. So now you'll have, uh, for example, lots of help uh, for getting started, for signing up. And then over here, these are all the videos that are eventually going to land on the individual tool pages. So under read books, uh, there are a lot of, uh, you'll see this little purple video icon, that means it's a video. Then you've got in some cases a Word document or a PDF. And so you can take advantage of all these resources to learn how to sign up, how to add students, how to create reading lists, and then how to read books on the various devices uh, that read Bookshare books. So we hope that all of those helps together are going to make uh, the process a lot easier for you to get started <clears throat> and get your students reading quickly. Uh, one other uh, neat thing I wanted to show you, and then I'm going to turn it over to Chesney, is <clears throat> excuse me the um, under the on the browse page which is actually where we have all of our ready-made reading lists which uh, Chesney's going to show you some of those uh, and how to access those but uh, under the section here for for teachers there's something a lot of you that a lot of you will probably be really excited about which is that we've created some lists by Lexile level 
This is new again. And so you'll see that under, so if you go to browse, I'll, I'll back up just to walk through how to get there again, go to the browse page and then click on four teachers. Then you'll see these browse by Lexile level. So these are collections of books in these different Lexile levels uh, that you can browse through and find books of interest uh, to your students. So that is new and we thought that you guys would like to see that. All right, I'm gonna jump back to the slides because uh, Chesney is gonna share a few things on her slides and I'm gonna unmute you, Chesney. So let me go to, <clears throat> there you go. Take it away, Chesney. All right, hello. So um, I'm a part of San Diego Unified School District and we are the second largest district in California. We have 130,000 students um, in grades uh, pre-K all the way through 12th, 12th grade. Um, of that student population, 5,000 of our students receive special ed services. Um, we have over 15 different ethnic groups, over 60 languages and dialects spoken in our district, and of our student population, 26.5% uh, are English learners. So we have a very large, diverse uh, group of students that we're supporting um, across uh, over 226 educational facilities. So that's just our district um, numbers as a whole. Our department um, is not quite as grand. We are made up of nine um, team members. We have um, speech therapists, occupational therapists, and um, speech language pathology assistants as members of our nine, um, team, nine teammates. Um, we have 3,600 students with assistive technology supports, and we have 2,500 students with reading and writing supports and of those students most of them have access to book share can i'm hearing some noise is there questions or okay i'm going to continue on no that's one of the participants 115. um so see the district-wide bookshare accounts for our students um, okay hold on I'm back to being muted all right okay I'm gonna continue on I'm not sure um, I'm doing a sound check can people hear me speaking um, okay perfect sorry my screen was saying I was muted. So um, our department oversees the district-wide um, bookshare accounts and gives students um, basic access to the book account, bookshare accounts. Um, we provide tr district-wide trainings and site trainings and we work with classroom teachers to assign additional books as needed. So historically, uh, we originally were making bookshare accounts, setting bookshare accounts for students as a department and then we were assigning individual reading lists so we'd have john smith we'd create account for him and we'd assign create a reading list and add all the books that john smith needed um, as you can imagine that became very time consuming and we noticed that we were um, having a lot of repeat um, titles added to these reading lists and so a couple years ago in order to be able to support our long large numbers we wanted to become more efficient and so we started creating district-wide reading lists and so we created a third grade textbook reading list and so we collected um, the titles of the text that students need, required access to for third graders and we created a reading list and we did that for all the grades we also created a literature list we made an elementary literature list uh, with recommended literature for elementary school middle school and high school and we also created reading lists um, for common core exemplar texts that are that were common among um, our school sites that teachers were using. And so we shifted our practice to, from creating an individual list just for John Smith to create, when we get that recommendation for John Smith, we created his account and then we assigned him to those three district-wide reading lists. And so he had access to those lists because we also noticed that teachers sometimes, just because they were running out of time, so not always able to manage it. We're having a hard time updating the, the reading list or adding the necessary books. And so we wanted to ensure that students had um, started off their experience with Bookshare with, ver with a variety of text already available to them. Um, as we've, our numbers have grown over the past couple of years, we've tried to find better ways to become more efficient 
at um, supporting these students. Again, our staff um, numbers have stayed the same and the district numbers have increased. And so we're, um, this year we're moving towards a model um, where we're gonna continue to access those district-wide lists, but we really want for our, our district-wide trainings, we're really wanting t uh, members, teachers to come to the trainings and walk away with the ability to have signed up their students, apply, um, add, assign their students to reading list and um, feel like they can add books to reading list as well. And so Bookshare has also done um, a great job of using a lot of public lists that I'll um, be demonstrating a little bit more about um, where we are also teaching people how to subscribe to those, um, to the district-wide and to the public list to have access to text. Um, so some of the things that I'm gonna be showing today is um, how to update students' grade levels. So over the summer, one of the responsibilities that our department has is we increase, um, we increment the grade level for each student. Um, and then we assign groups of students to reading list. Um, and then, um, if we need to create and share any more reading lists, um, we do that, and so I'll be showing you how to do that. And then I'll also be showing how to add new students um, and assign books for those students. And then I can show you some of the new, new dashboard features that um, Bookshare has created to help monitor each student's reading activities. Okay. Okay, so great, Chesney. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing so you can share on your end. Okay, so I am going to share my screen and okay so I am now sharing my screen okay so this is just this is a demonstration account so you will see some student names but they um, are not real students um, so like I was saying in the past um, or over the summers, we um, like to increment the grade levels. And so in order to do that, we come over here to the members tab and we select that. And this is a list of the, of the members. Um, so these are our fictitious students that we have today. And so I've got the list of students here. And so we wanna increment the grade level. And so the, what, the way that we can do that is uh, if we check all right here we can come down and it selects all the students and then we come over here to more actions and we can increment the grade level so instead of having to go in and edit each student's um, membership information we can just do this all at once so we can increment the grade level and then after we do that that's it will increase the grade level. So now that we've increased the grade level, we wanna ensure that the students um, continue to have access to the text that are at their current grade level. And so the way that we can ensure that is, well, first of all, we can um, sort by their grade. So I'm gonna come here and just click on, click on grade and it's gonna organize the list um, by grade. And so if I wanna ensure that all the fifth graders, all the new fifth graders are added to um, uh, their fifth grade textbook, I can select the fifth graders. This is one way to do this. And then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna go add to reading list. And those are my fifth graders. I wanna ensure that they're added to the fifth grade textbook list. Um, and some other lists, these are the reading lists that we've already assigned as a district. And I'll go through and show some of that in a second. Um, they're already assigned. I can also ensure that they're assigned to our Common Core State Standards grades four through five text exemplars. And then if I wanna make sure they're also attached, assigned to the elementary literature list. So I select the list that I want these students to be assigned to, and then I come down here and select Assign. I can also filter by a grade level. So Instead of sorting the list by grade level, I can come up here to the filter by, and I'm gonna come over here and select uh, seventh grade, and we'll hit filter. And I have one seventh grader on my fictitious list. And so I wanna ensure that this seventh grader is also added uh, to the specific list. So I'm gonna add, select that student, and then add to the reading list. And again, these are the district, the the district lists that we've created. So you have a seventh grade textbook list. 
we want uh, the student to be added to the sixth through eighth common core st state standards exemplar text list. And because the student's in middle school, we'll make sure that they're added to the middle school literature list. Um, and then we would hit assign. So that's uh, the work that we do over the summer. So that when the students start the beginning of the new school year, they have been, their grade levels have been incremented and they're assigned to the list that correspond with their grade level. Additionally, sometimes we have teachers uh, request that students have access to um, specific series like Goosebumps or Harry Potters. And so what we can do is we can come over here to my reading list. And we teach teachers how to subscribe to some of Bookshare's public lists. So these are the reading lists that we have created right here. But if we come up here to this little Wi-Fi looking symbol, it's going to help us subscribe to shared reading list. And so I'm going to select that. And there is a very extensive list of uh, public reading lists um, that Bookshare has made. And so if we're wanting to look for that Goosebumps series, we can just come in here and search by Goosebumps. And then it finds the series, I select it, and then I can hit subscribe. And now I've been subscribed to this reading list. And so when I'm assigning my students to the reading list, um, that's now a list that will come up in, in my list that I can make sure they have access. It's really important once we, um, that we are assigning students to those reading lists. That's how they have access to, to the books when they log in on their side. Um, okay, so we can also create a reading list. So if I have uh, teachers that need a specific list, they're gonna come over here. So I'm again, I'm in my reading list. I have seen my list right here. And they can come to the plus sign and we're gonna create a new list. And so um, for this one, we're gonna call it Second Grade Cinderella Folk Tales. And we have the option to make it private, which would mean that only I would have access to it, to make it accessible to members only, or to make it accessible for the whole organization. Um, so we usually recommend somewhere between members or organization lists. When our department, when the assistive technology department creates lists, we choose the organization option because we want all of our, uh, all of our schools and staff members to have access to this. When we have site specific teachers that make a list for maybe the, the books that the students are checking out from the library, we recommend a member list and then they create that list and they can assign which students have access to it. And that way it doesn't, clutter up the district level list. It can just be uh, books that are a little more specific to the site. So for this one, we're gonna keep this as an organization list. And so we've created the title, and we're gonna save it, but then we still have to go in and add those titles to the list. So I'm in the second grade Cinderella list and I wanna assign students to it. So looking down and uh, because we incremented grade levels, I don't have any second graders. Let's filter, let's sort this. Okay, so for the sake of this demonstration, we're gonna select our fifth graders just so that we can see that. Um, and we're going to come down here and we're gonna add those selected members. So now we have assigned members to this reading list. We have two, so that's the first step, but we still don't have any titles. So we need to add titles or add books to this reading list. And so I selected titles and I'm gonna come over here and add books. And so the first book I want to add is Mufaro's Beautiful Daughters. And there's the book. And then I'm going to, I can choose to save and close, but I have a list of books that I want to assign. So I'm going to do save and add more. And then I can add more titles to this list. So the next title is The Rough Face Girl. And I am going to select this book and I'm going to save and add more. And the last title for this list is going to be Yeshen, a Cinderella story from China. And I'm going to choose this option. And so those are the three books that I've added. And so now I'm going to hit save and close. And now I've not only created the reading list, but I've assigned my students or the members to the reading list. And I've assigned titles to the reading list so that when the students log in, they have access to these titles on this reading list. 
Um, so that's one of the options of how to create reading lists and how to give students access. If I have um, a student that shows up in the middle of school year or become or his needs become identified that they need access to Bookshare, I can always create a, a new membership account for them and then assign them to these lists as well. And so that's what I'm going to show you. I'm going to come back over here to the members tab. And I'm going to create, I'm going to add a member right up here with this icon. And I'm going to fill in the information for this student. And I'd like to show you this. And I'm going to select the student is going to be in. We're going to have this to be our second grader. Um, our district has what's called Active Directory passwords, and so our students get a six, a five to six digit ID number and a password assigned to them, so they can access. Um, Google Chrome and Google Crafts Classroom and some of the other digital features in our district. And so to help students not have to remember a thousand different passwords and teachers also not have to remember a bunch of passwords, we duplicate that uh, number and ID um, for the accounts. For this demo, I'm just going to be using our fictitious student's name. But if you, if students are already having assigned uh, passwords and login information, I would recommend utilizing that because it keeps a consistent um, manner for students to log in um, to their variety of accounts. And then you can add students to your quick list. This means that when you log into Bookshare, they're gonna be assigned to your quick list. And so if you're managing um, a small amount of students, this is really helpful. For our district, for our assistive technology department, um, if we're setting up the account, I don't want them on my quick list. I want the case managers to add them to the quick list. And so we do some different things there. But for the demo, we'll keep him added, and he is part of Fake School Unified for the district, and he is an elementary school student, and we go through and select the student's disability, and that the student has an IEP or a 504, and then we save it. So I've created the student's account, and there's the username. So we're going to update his username. Okay, so after that, I get the opportunity to add that student right then to a reading list. And so because I know that the student, we've got these district-wide or reading lists we want them to have access to, I can come in and say, okay, I want them added to that second grade Cinderella folktale list. I want the student added to our exemplar text common core list right here. I want the student added to the elementary literature list, and I want them also added to the Goosebumps um, public list that I've subscribed to. So I can select that, and I've selected four reading lists, and then I'm gonna go ahead and assign um, the student to those reading lists. So that's if you get a new student, if after the school year gets going, how you can add them and then continue to add them to those pre-existing or those already existing reading lists that you have. Um, oftentimes we also get requests where they start a school has started using a new textbook or adopted a new book for the English classes for the students to read. And so instead of creating a separate list with just that book, we'll go ahead and assign that book to um, an existing reading list. And so the way that we can do that is we can come here to my reading list and we can select the, the text that we want to add. And so if the, the title of the book is The Outsiders and they're going to be reading it in the sixth to eighth grade, we can come over here to our sixth to eighth grade text exemplars, select the list, and then we can come up here. I usually like to check our list to make sure we already don't have it. Okay, we don't have The Outsiders on this list yet. And so we're going to add a book to this list and we're going to select The Outsiders. You can also search by ISBN or authors, um, but sometimes the title for this case will be easy enough. And then we can select um, which version. A lot of times I'll check with the teachers and ask what was the version, or, this, I, or I can compare it with ISBN, just to make sure that it lines up with what's being taught in the classroom. And so we're going to go with the, the version that was copyrighted in 1995. We're going to select that, and then we can just hit save and close. And now, this book has been added to this reading list. And so now we've got it right there. Um, 
So that's a little bit how uh, reading lists work. There's a variety of different ways to get the books on the list, to add lists, and to make sure students have access to it. But ultimately, we wanna make sure that we always have members assigned to the reading list and that we have titles assigned to the reading list so that students can have that access. Um, if, if you're inheriting students and you're not sure what reading list they're, at, they're added to, um, Bookshare has just created this new dashboard feature. So we're gonna go into members. And you can select on the student's last name. And it'll give you their basic information. Okay, Lynn's in eighth grade. She's on my quick list. This is her username. And then it'll show us also the reading list that she's been assigned to. And so then I can see, oh, she's assigned to the grades six through eight text exemplars and middle school literature. Oh, but I really need to make sure she's got that eighth grade textbook list. And so then I could go back into my reading list. Um, and make sure she gets added to that. I also have the opportunity once um, the students start downloading and accessing books to come here to the downloaded books. Um, this is, like I said, a fictitious student, but it'll show uh, the books that the students have downloaded or that they've accessed using the, the browser, the web reader. Um, and so that also gives me an idea of is Lynn accessing these, these texts at home or at school? Um, and if she's not, then I can resolve uh, maybe what some of the barriers might be to help her to access those texts. Um, so I think that's about it. Chesney, we had a question about uh, wanting to see how to request books. I'm not sure if that's something you've ever done. If, uh, um, if you wanna... I, yeah, I think I can walk, walk you through it. So um, if the book isn't in, if you've, if you've searched in Bookshare and you don't have access to the book, um, I believe it's in the Help Center. Um, so the Help Center is always good too. They've got a pretty good search bar here that if you don't know where it's at, you can always search it in here. But you, over here on the side, we have the option to request a book. So we're in the Help Center, I'm gonna request a book. And then it'll say you need to be logged into your Bookshare account. Um, and then you'll fill out the book request form right here. So you'll need the title and the ISBN to do this. Um, because I'm not at all the sites that, um, this, where all the, I'm itinerant, so I don't always see all the students. A lot of times I'll have staff send this to me an email or I'll tell them take a picture of the book. Um, so I see the book cover and then the title and the ISBN. Um, sometimes that's a little bit easier. Um, because this is a demonstration account, it doesn't look like I have the privileges to do that. Um, because I haven't fully registered. But that would be how you get to that form and then you submit the request. Great, thank you Chesney, that's really helpful. Uh, let's see, I wanted to uh, jump back to uh, the slides if I could, so if you can stop sharing your screen and I'll jump back uh, okay. to share. What I want to do is um, show a screenshot of that dashboard that actually does have downloaded books listed since that was something that uh, wasn't coming up on yours. I know because of um, you know, a, a bug I think that we're working on fixing, but, uh, but here's a sample dashboard of a student uh, that shows the, the books they've downloaded. And so what you'll see is the title, uh, the author of the book, the format in which they downloaded it, and the date on which they downloaded it. So as Chesney demonstrated, when you click on the last name of any student in your roster, this dashboard now comes up that gives you the basic information about the student, shows you what books they've downloaded, and also shows you which reading lists uh, they've to, that they have been assigned to. And so if there are zero books on their downloaded books list, uh, that's something to just check in with them about to, to see if they actually are accessing the books that uh, that they that have been shared with them. So that's that. I wanted to quickly show this short video. I'm hoping it works here in this platform uh, that will um, show you just a little bit about some students reading Bookshare and, and help you understand how they end up reading because we're not going to necessarily go through and demonstrate uh, the, the reading process today. Uh, but um, let me just see if I can get this video to play. Oops, hold on, I'm gonna turn up my volume so it's all the way up. And... Book is a new world. 
and nothing should keep you from exploring. Whether you're learning to read, studying for an exam, or just having fun, Bookshare helps you read in ways that work for you. Choose your favorite high quality voice and listen to your books. Stay focused with karaoke style text highlights. Adjust text to your perfect size, speed, color, and contrast. Choose from over half a million titles ready to read on nearly any device. And the best part? It's free for U.S. students who qualify. And less than a dollar a week for qualified adults. So start reading in ways that work for you and explore new worlds with Bookshare. Okay, cool. So that's just a short video that showed you some students reading and you could see they were reading on a lot of different devices, iPads, <clears throat> excuse me, computer, um, computers of various kinds, uh, phones. So <clears throat> lots of options for students to read. So I'm just going to recap and thank you, Chesney. That was such a helpful overview of the way you set up your account. Uh, we are going to get into some questions in a minute here, but um, I just want to recap uh, to use those new educators get started pages and uh, hopefully those can help you uh, get further along in the process whether you're just starting with Bookshare or whether you signed up at one point and never got any further than that uh, hopefully that'll get you through all the steps uh, if you haven't already created an organizational account you can do that or you can get added to an existing account <clears throat> uh, the system <clears throat> If there's already an account set up at your school, the system will give you an opportunity to uh, to let let us know so that uh, we can try to connect you with uh, with the organ you know whoever already has the organization account. But our interest is is in getting books to students, so whatever is the most efficient uh, and and the, the fastest process we we support. So if you are would rather just start a new account, that's fine too. Uh, then you add your qualified students. We definitely encourage you to add other teachers and as Chesney mentioned, get other teachers trained in how to assign books, how to add students, you know, how to look at those Bookshare ready-made reading lists that we offer and uh, take advantage of those uh, so that you're just distributing the workload and it doesn't fall on, you know, one or two people for a large organization. And then assign books to students by either creating or subscribing to reading lists and then sharing the reading lists. And then um, just showing the students how to log in and read and those, as I mentioned, those videos that you'll find in the uh, training and resources section are gonna be very helpful in, in literally walking through how to use each and every tool uh, that reads Bookshare books. And so that collection of uh, videos is, is growing daily. So keep, a, keep an eye on that. Um, so we're going to open it up for questions. Uh, I know there have been a lot of questions coming in through the chat. My, my terrific colleagues, uh, Mario Olivares and Laura Ronberg have been uh, fielding questions in the chat, but I thought this would be a great opportunity for them to share questions that have come up they think will apply to everyone, and then we'll have a chance for some additional questions as well. So Mario, Laura, anything you want to bring up that was worth mentioning to the whole group? Um, yeah, I mean, there are a bunch of uh, questions that, um, I mean, some of them were a little bit similar. So um, here are two related to uh, what you presented at the beginning related to eligibility. Uh, so question one is, um, what qualifying category do English language learners fall under? I was under the impression that they would not qualify for share. Great question. And, and thank you for asking that. Uh, so in and of itself, uh, and in, the fact that someone is an English language learner does not qualify them for Bookshare. It's not a, it's not considered a print disability. It's not um, it's not an issue specific to their ability to read or process print. So if they have a learning disability or some other type of reading um, reading or processing um, challenge, in addition to their uh, to them being an English language learner, it would be that that would qualify them and not their ELL status. So, uh, so right, in, being an English language learner in and of itself is not a qualifying uh, condition, unfortunately. And I will say in, on these eligibility questions, we would ab absolutely love to serve every student <laughs> with Bookshare, but uh, we are bound by copyright law and want to respect that because we value our relationships with publishers. So, uh, the, you know, those, those qualifications that we are putting out there are the, um, the you know, that's the law that, that we need to follow, so. Okay, um, and then uh, another eligibility follow-up. Um, uh, so the question is, 
how do I identify a 504 student when I work with special education and students? Um, yeah. yeah, good question. So that that's an understandable question because if you're working only with special ed, you wouldn't necessarily be in contact with students who served under 504, Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act. And so, right, I, I think um, you would have to, to have a teacher who works with that student to make you aware that that student is uh, served under 504. Uh, and as you noticed, uh, that was an option for when you sign up a student for Bookshare, you can indicate that they are served under 504. Um, the interesting fact is that neither an IEP nor a 504 are technically required to become a Bookshare member. That's an interesting part of the way the law is written. Because it, it's not education law, it's copyright law, it doesn't use terms like IEP and 504. So neither of those is technically qualified, but we do find that most students who qualify for Bookshare are served under one of those two plans. And we ask that question because we do like to report that information to the Office of Special Education Programs, just the total number of students uh, served in each of those two categories. So we do ask that you, that you complete that. The one other piece of information that's really important is that there's a subset of the Bookshare collection uh, is a group of textbooks that we get from a resource called the NIMAC. And those textbooks, unfortunately, cannot be provided to students who are served under 504 or, or basically students who don't have an IEP. And that, again, is uh, part of the law and it's really out of our hands and we wish it were different, but that's the situation. So, uh, but I will say that it's only about 10,000 of the books in Bookshare that are the NIMAC sourced textbooks. Uh, the vast majority of the collection is available to every Bookshare member, but those students who don't have an IEP will not be able to access that small collection, relatively small collection of, of uh, or, or small portion of the collection. Um, so anyway, but you can add students who are served under 504. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so a couple people have asked if Chesney could demonstrate how a student logs in to access their books. Right. Excellent. Excellent. Um, I think maybe I'll just do that since I am uh, I'm sharing my screen at this point. Um, let's see here. Okay. Let me go ahead and go into oops. Do this. Okay. Here we go. So let me just go back to um, the website. I'm going to go back to Bookshare and I'll show you how a student logs in and what they see. So I'm going to go to the Bookshare homepage, bookshare.org, and I'm going to select login. And I'm going to log in as a student whom I've added. You see that I've added a lot of fake students over the recent weeks as I've been demonstrating uh, this. But so this is the username and password that I assigned to this fake student when I added them to Bookshare and that's what they're using to log in. So you'll see it's not an email address and that's fine. The username and the password uh, are something the teacher can set up. The password has to have a letter and a number. But other than that, uh, you can pretty much use anything um, that, that you want to that, that's still available to use as a username and password. So I'm signing in as that student. It says, welcome student. Um, it has uh, a, a list here of any recent books the student has read. The student can also see their reading list to which they're assigned so that they really kind of have two options for jumping into their reading. They can either open again a book that they had already previously opened <clears throat> or they can go into their reading list and see what else the teachers have assigned them that maybe they haven't opened yet. So here's a bunch of reading lists to which the student has been assigned and they might find um, a book here that, you know, a, a list or a book here that they're interested in. Uh, let's see, I'm going to jump into uh, this, uh, the Kane Chronicles. And let's see, I'm going to just open this very, um, though they're all up in the second one. So the student has a few options. They can select the Read Now button, and I'll do that in a second. That opens the book in Bookshare Web Reader and allows them to be able to read uh, pretty quickly. The other option they have is to download the book. 
which they can download it if they're going to be opening it like in iBooks, on an iPad, or on another um, tool or device uh, for which they actually need the file, you know, the file. So they can download it and it goes to wherever downloads typically go on that on their device. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to select the Read Now button, which opens this book up in Bookshare Web Reader. It takes a minute or two, as you'll see here. <clears throat> So the student logs in with their username and password that was assigned to them by their teacher. They find their books and they open them and read. Uh, here we're going to go to the table of contents and select a chapter. And then um, the, there's a play button at the very top. I'll go ahead and just play this briefly. We meet the monkey. It's Carter again. Sorry. We had to turn off the tape for a while because we were being fun. Okay, so that's Bookshare Web Reader. Um, there's a couple of add-ons that I mentioned earlier, Read and Write for Google Chrome and Snap and Read that add additional functionality and, and in some cases better voices uh, to these reading tools. So I encourage you to check those out. But uh, that's the process of a student logging in, uh, finding a book and opening it and reading. Um, they could also log into Bookshare in any number of the apps, uh, like for example, on an iPad. And the videos that we've added to the site recently uh, explain that process. Yeah, thanks, Christine. And, and uh, since you're demonstrating this, just to follow up on, on reading tool. Um, so uh, can you change the voices um, on web reader and, and other tools? Right, okay. So um, in the web reader itself, it's going to use whatever voice is the default voice in your on your device. So this, uh, this voice is Microsoft David. I have the other option here of Microsoft Zira. So I'll try that one. Um, let's just play that so we can hear it. It's Carter again. Sorry. We had to turn off the tape for a while because we were being followed by well. We'll get to that later. Okay, so that's uh, one voice. But as I mentioned, the read and write for Google Chrome is a really nice extension. It's this purple puzzle piece here. Oh, it's wanting me to sign in to my Gmail uh, to be able to use it. Sorry. <clears throat> um, so it, there's a, a hover speech tool and when I hover the tool uh, over the text, um, it should start reading. Here we go. Sadie was telling you how we left London, right? Okay. Um, so anyway, we followed Amos down to the weird boat dock at the quayside. Okay, so that is uh, an example of um, read and write for Google Chrome using their toolbar on top of Bookshare Web Reader. You can see the the, the um, highlighting was a nicer contrast. There are also lots of options for colors, and there are many voice options as well. So that's a great tool. And then Don Johnson's Snap and Read Universal is a similar Chrome extension. Um, that you can check out and it offers uh, additional voices and uh, even the option to level up or level down uh, certain portions of text. Um, you saw that the syncing was a little off and I think that's just because of our web connection. Normally it, it syncs um, right on, right with the audio. Okay, um, great. Um, yeah, so question on, on bookmarking um, and uh, starting off where you left off on a book? Good question. That does come up a lot. So uh, if you open, if a student opens a book in Bookshare Web Reader, uh, the same book on the same device, Bookshare Web, Web Reader will remember where they left off. Uh, unfortunately, at this point, if they were to open the same book on a different device, uh, it's not going to remember where they left off necessarily. So uh, the, the uh, that is, that's actually another reason why some of these supplemental tools are really handy because both read and write and um, snap and read offer options of different kinds for bookmarking. So we uh, recommend that, but the tool in and of itself, um, it will bookmark it if it's the same book on the same device. Okay, um, great. So maybe switching gears for just a little bit and getting back more to uh, the basics of uh, administration. So, um, uh, in the in the in the webinar, a number of um, features were demonstrated. Uh, can do sponsors have access uh, to all of the things that Chesney demonstrated, or do they have limited access? 
Okay, very good question. So do sponsors have access to everything Chesney demonstrated? Yes, um, she is She is logging in, I believe, as a sponsor uh, on the account. She's not, I don't know that she's the primary contact, but um, let me go back and I'll log in uh, quickly as the, um, as a teacher instead of a student. So I'm gonna log out as the student and log in as a, as a teacher, similar to what Chesney was logged in as early, uh, earlier. And um, what we've done recently is made it so that at pretty much sponsors have all the same permissions now that primary contacts do. Mm -hmm. So uh, as a sponsor, so I'm, I'm a sponsor on this account. I can create reading lists. I can add students. I can uh, add students to reading lists. I can do all of that. The only thing a sponsor cannot do that a primary contact on an account can do is delete multiple members from the account at one time. And that's because we were finding people were accidentally logging in thinking that they were looking at just their list of students and then deleting a whole lot of students who maybe had moved on, graduated or whatever, not realizing they were deleting them from the whole account. So, um, so we've made it so that primary contacts can only are the only ones now who can delete more than one student at a time, but pretty much everything else uh, that a, a primary contact can do, a sponsor can do. And all those things that I showed you, a sponsor, that Chesney showed, a sponsor can do. And some related, and you may uh, want to, uh, you may want to uh, re uh, uh, construct a question, but can you demonstrate, or, or can you explain how to assign students to case managers, i.e. sponsors? Yes, uh, that's a very good question. So how do, how do you assign students to a particular um, educator or case manager? Uh, there's really, unfortunately, no way for you to do that. Uh, the teacher themselves uh, would have to do that. So they would, uh, they would have to be logged in as themselves and then uh, go, like, uh, let's say they log into the account. They're, they're going to see the same list of students that uh, everyone sees, everyone, Every teacher on the account is going to see the same list of students, um, but what they would then do is go into the, um, you know, edit, edit the student information and um, indicate or click the quick list box to put that student on their quick list. So they'd have to be on, uh, logged in as them. So here it's, it is checked because the student is on, on my quick list already, but if I were a sponsor and the student was on the Bookshare account, but not added, to my quick list, then I would log in and I would check that box. And then the and Christine, can I interrupt for a second? Yes, yes. Some of the, that we, that comes up with a lot of our teachers as well. And so what we recommend is for, from this member's screen, we recommend to uh, filter by the school. So if you've inherited a certain school, you can go into the filters and then where it says school and all schools, you can select your school and then it'll list just the students at your school. And then, so if we did Central High School, we could filter by just those students. And then you can select, so if there's multiple students here, you could select the check the box next to the edit at the top of the table. Mm -hmm. And um, under more actions. Let me try, let me try and see if there's others. Oh, I, I haven't been very good about putting school names on my fake students, so. <laughs> But if you, yeah, if you check the edit yep. and then so that would select, select all the students on that table. If you go down to more actions, you can add that whole group of students to your quick list. And so that's a, that's a good way of getting kind of set up and then you can at least have all your students in one name in one list instead of all the students in the organization, you could have just the students at uh, your Palo Alto Elementary School. Right. Very good. Very good point, Chesney. Thank you for pointing that out. So, so basically, when a sponsor logs in, they can select all they can select all students who should be assigned to them, and they can add them to their quick list. But um, another person cannot add a student to someone else's quick list. But that's great that you're reminding us that we can do multiple ones. Excellent. People have asked if they can create demo accounts for them, you know, like Chesney has. Been. Right, so um, as far as a demonstration account that you can use for training, um, what I'm gonna do is put my email address back up. I'm happy to send you um, information. Can you send my slides? Uh, no, I will not see your screen though, but I can send up your... No, I'm just asking if this is back up. No. No. Okay, sorry, let me, um, let me jump back to the slides. We're just wanting to make sure you're seeing what I want you to see here. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. So there's my email address. You can email me uh, to request a demonstration account. We have one that we've made available uh, broadly and it's a shared account. So you can use that. Um, we would probably prefer that you not do what we had Chesney do for this webinar, which is to create a, a brand new account. She's going to go back and delete that after the fact, uh, just so that to keep our, our numbers uh, fairly accurate. Uh, so you can email me and I'll be happy to share the, uh, the login information for the shared demonstration account that we have. So I, we're at time, we're going to have to end, but uh, what we'll do is look through the questions and make sure to send out some information with the, the recording of the webinar and the slides. Uh, we will send out any information to questions that we didn't get a chance to answer. And you all have been a great audience and Chesney, you, you were terrific. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for, for joining and uh, we hope that uh, you get uh, many of your qualified students up and running quickly with Bookshare and we're here to help uh, with any part of the process that you, uh, that you might need assistance with. And thank you for all that you do for students. Have a great day, everyone.